how are we doing guys welcome back to the channel and today is going to be lord's pvp slash tips and tricks for the hashashan guide i'm going to also focus a little bit about some preps that you're going to want to do for the awakening now just to relieve yourself of some burdens later on and zect has done a great foundations pvp guide for the pre-awakening I'd highly recommend you guys check that out. I'll put a link in the description down below. I'm going to try not to just repeat everything that he said, but to just add value on top of the points that he has made. But he has made some great foundational points. So I would definitely recommend watching his content as well. I'll put a link, like I said, down in the description for you guys to check that out. Okay, so now let's talk about the uh, skill build. So I'm going to be going through the skill build, keeping awakening in mind, just to add some value on top of what Zek's already gone through. Now, I'm going to throw some numbers out as well. So uh, an easy one to calculate is the uh, maximum skills we're going to need to max out the pre-awakening is 1,546. Now, I was checking out one of Shaky Bay's videos a little while ago, and I remember he opened up his skill menu. So I went and found that where he was on the test lab. He opened up his skill menu when, with Awakening and Pre-Awakening on the class, and he had around 2,700 skill points with some leftover skill points. So I took his maximum, I deducted the leftover, and I got the number 2,380. Now, I'm assuming he had everything maxed out Pre-Awakening and Awakening. I don't see why he wouldn't have. So with that assumption in place, that tells me that the maximum skill points we're going to need to max everything out is 2,380. Unfortunately, I cannot confirm this using the skill calculator because Hashash is not on there yet, but I'm pretty confident that this number is correct. And if it is a little bit off, like I just suggested, it's just going to be a little bit off. So with these two numbers, that will inform us that the skill points we need to max out the Awakening is 834. So my recommended uh, skill build that I'm going to be striving towards for the Awakening is 1,971 skill points. As you can see, I'm not too far off of that currently. I'd highly recommend if you want to try to master this class, just go to Polly's. If you've got any 530 scrolls, pop them in Polly's. That is the best place for you to farm your skill points. As in my opinion, 1,971 skill points, my recommendation is good, but honestly, I think maximum skill points is best because the more damage you do, the better. And the way I also came up with the recommendation of 1,971 is putting the assumption in that we're going to want to max every awakening skill. So this number can decrease a little bit if we don't want to do that, if there are some awakening skills that are not worth maxing. So keep that in mind. But without any further ado, let's get on to the skill build. So we're gonna, I'm going to go through it here from scratch. Halidee's Throw, we're going to take to tier 3 to reduce the cooldown. Arrow Assault, we're going to take. Halidee's Assault, we're going to take to Absolute. Mirage, we're going to pick up. Owl's Dominion, we will take this to Absolute. Paradise Beckons will be taken to Absolute as well. Sand Slicer will not be touched because it already has the minimum cooldown. Hourglass of Defiance, I think, is a really, really interesting skill. And if you can master the movement with this skill, you're going to be an insane Hashashin. But as of right now, we're not going to pick this up because it is, it is a very skill point heavy for a couple seconds extra duration. I think you need to spend a total of 60 odd skill points to get three extra seconds to be able to use the skill, which for now is not worth it. But later on, you definitely want Tail Cutter, I think, is a really, really strong skill, uh, but it is on its minimum cooldown. It doesn't do too much damage at max. However, it'd be one of the first skills besides Sand Slicer that I'll be maxing out later on. Shadow Splitter, as of right now in the pre-awakening, I would max this out. However, with Awakening in mind, you're not going to need to do that. It's not going to be necessary to have that DP shred because you're going to have access to so many different combos. Shadow Splitter will not be in that one. But in the pre-awakening only combos, Shadow Splitter is needed to do a max damage combo. Rupture, we're going to max out. Uh, Purge, we're going to take this to tier 4 to max, well, to minimize the cooldown. Ridge Reaver, we're going to take that to Absolute. That's one of our main Super Armor Traders. Piercing Tornado is definitely going to be Absoluted. Sand Divider, we're going to be taking this to tier 4 to minimize the cooldown. But this is another skill that I would definitely want Absolute later on. Hourglass of Death, we're going to take this all the way just below the Absolute, which is tier 5, to minimize the cooldown. Um, this is probably one of the last skills I'll max out. Um, 
This and Halidee's throw would be like the last two skills that I'll take to Absolute. Owl's Breath is going to be Absolute. Quicksand is going to be Absolute. And definitely pick up the flow. Choison Blade is going to be Absolute. The Sense also going to be Absolute. Another main Super Armor Trader. And all your passives you definitely want maxed on your character. So once you have all these skills leveled up like I do at the minute, what you want to see is 834 skill points left over and then you are ready to go. So you need, again, just to repeat, 1,971 total skill points. All right, now let's move on to the skill add-ons. There are six different skills that have pretty good PvP modifiers on them. So I'm going to go through the six skills and there's a couple of modifiers that we can switch out as well. Then I'll go through what I'd like to use personally. Now, Ridge Reaver is a really, really good one. So you can have all accuracy plus 5% and casting speed minus 10%. That's super good. Having debuffing your opponent is really what I'm focusing on here. It's super powerful in small scale and um, 1v1s. Large scale, I mean, if you're PA'd, it helps up the group as well. So keep that in mind. Uh, Halidee Assault, we've got attack speed plus 4% for 5 seconds. Movement speed minus 7% for 7 seconds. And Tail Cutter, we've got accuracy plus 4% for 12 seconds. And attack speed... Uh, minus 7% for 7 seconds. Now, coming to this Ridge Reaver, accuracy is nice, but again, if you've got decent accuracy yourself, and also on top of that, you're using your Kazaka and you have good AP, what you can do instead to make yourself a bit more tanky is go for the evasion on this skill. That is definitely another viable option, it just depends on your playstyle. Halley Assault, an interesting thing we could do here, you, what I would do is maybe trade out this attack speed because 5 seconds isn't that long, so instead of having the plus 4% attack speed, I'd go for the uh, attack, the PvP attack plus 5 for 5 seconds. Again, 5 seconds isn't that long, but if you hit your opponent and this uh, add-on applies to you, you can then use it to absorb it to use your block jump, your arid assault. So that's kind of like a utility add-on right there. I'd probably go with the PvP attack over the attack speed personally. And Tail Cutter, you could do a similar thing. Instead of the accuracy, we'll go for the monster AP buff. Now, this is a PvE buff. However, again, applying the skill add-on onto your opponent gives you now 8 seconds to be able to block up your opponent when you want. And since you're not activating a Haldi Throw or your Hourglass of Defiance, not Defiance, the, um, the LTB, those are two skills that are very telegraphed So someone that knows how to fight the class. When you activate those two skills, they're ready to get block jumped and they're going to play a bit more passively and defend themselves from that. Whereas if you put it on different skills as add-ons, it's going to be harder them, for them to predict what you're going to do and you can surprise them with the block jump. So the other three skills that have good add-ons. Now, Shadow Splitter here is the only one that's not a super armor that I've put in there because this is a part of one of your main damage combo skills. So if you're personally having some issues killing people because you don't have the gear required, I'd recommend putting this on. Because not only are you going to have a protection shred using the skill, you'll give yourself a plus 10 attack and 7% attack speed so you can do your skills a bit faster too. So I would recommend that for people with a bit lower gear. Uh, quicksand, I would 100% say you need this for large scale. These add-ons are perfect for large scale. Mainly the instantly reduced MPWP SP. That's going to be huge when you put that into a ball and it keeps ticking and their mana just is getting drained. It's going to be pretty big, especially if you unlock your ult for large scale. I would recommend doing that. It puts a lot of control onto the opponent. They're losing a lot of mana, making them almost useless in the fight for a couple of seconds. Um, also, all evasion plus 3%. It's nice. It, this is more for like the small scale 1v1s is really going to be helpful in. Uh, but it is a nice buff. And finally, Descent. You can put both the attack speed and casting speed reduction on this skill here good super armor lasts for seven seconds but they're not as effective as the counterparts as we had earlier now for my general day-to-day -day pvp activities these are the skills and skill add-ons i like to use so as you can see i'm heavily leaning towards the casting speed movement speed and attack speed reductions i'm also implementing both the monster ap and the pvp ap in Tail Cutter and Halidee's Assault to make, make it more difficult for my opponent to know when I'm actually going to block jump them. And on top of that, I put an evasion buff on the Ridge Reaver. With the evasion buff on Ridge Reaver and the casting speed reduction, it makes trading with casters a little bit easier. 
Now, obviously, Witch Wizards are still going to outtrade you if they're anywhere in your realm of gear score, because they are some of the best SA traders in the game, and rightfully slow, uh, rightfully so, because they're slow classes. But this does work. People don't have. If they're people a little bit lower gear or just enough lower gear, this really helps me trade with them. Now, one thing I would change if I was going into large scale, large scale, I'd be using um, these skill add-ons here with quicksand, and this is what I would trade out. Now, over here, if you guys have a little bit lower gear and you're finding it difficult to kill people, I'd recommend putting the PvP and attack speed add-on to the Shadow Splitter, because that is a part of your main damage combo. I'd recommend putting the accuracy on your Rage Reaver and keeping the casting speed reduction. And on Tail Cutter, I'd go with the accuracy because 12 seconds is a long time. So all accuracy plus 4% for 12 seconds is pretty good. And then the attack speed you can go with or if you still prefer having the AP buff to make yourself that more predictable, unpredictable with using your block jump, you can take off the attack speed buff and go with that if you prefer. But those are my recommendations. Now, in terms of how you want to build your Hachashan, you are definitely going to want full AP accessories. For your armor, when you are pen, you want to go full evasion. So that's pen heave helmet, pen dim tree, pen muskins, pen libras. If you are tet, zect also hit the head on this one. DR is greater than evasion on Tet's armors. This is a fact, it doesn't matter what class you have, with what evasion baselines they have, with evasion modifiers they have, DR Tet armor is greater than evasion Tet armor. So, for your Tets, you want to have Tet Begs gloves with Tet Ergon boots. You still want to have the Dim Tree. Dim Tree is greater than Red Nose. Now, for the helmet, it's the only exception. I will still stick with Pen Heave over a Tet Boss helmet. Pen Heave is just the same price to buy off the central market as Tet Boss helmets. So it's definitely worth going this route. So you're one out of three armors away. In terms of gear progression, if you guys are full Tet, I'd recommend penning your Dim Tree first and then penning either your Libra gloves or your muskins. These two doesn't really matter in what order. I'd probably do the gloves first for a little bit more accuracy and then do the boots next. Now, if you guys currently have Tet boss gear, let me give you some recommendations. If you've got the Tet muskin boots and Tet Libra gloves and you are planning to buy pen versions of these armors, just hold on to it. It's not worth trading out. Once you got the pen, then sell your tet. If you are planning to enhance it yourself, what I would recommend doing is buying or enhancing the tet version of this armor first. So buying or enhancing tet begs gloves and tet ergon boots. And then once you've done that, you're going to attempt to pen obviously on these tets. And then you're gonna keep attempting pens when you have enough silver. I'd recommend once a week, do your upgrade sessions and try to get these to pen. If you want to do it yourself, it is cheaper to buy from the central market nine times out of 10. Keep that in mind, but it can also be difficult to snipe these items because competition is high for buying pens. Now, if you have a Tet Red Nose and your plan is to buy a pen dim tree, keep the Tet Red Nose. If you have a Tet Red Nose and you want to make your own pen dim tree, then just get a pen, just buy a base or a prior or a duo or try dim tree. Keep attempting pen on that and just keep your tet red nose until it goes pen. Your helmet, if you've already got a tet boss helmet, just sell it off and buy a pen heave. That I would 100% recommend doing straight away. In terms of weapons, guys, you want a Kazaka. I don't care what you hear and from who you hear it. You don't want it often with this class. Even with my AP, I've gone against people that have evasion. You need the accuracy. I don't care if Shaky Bay's saying it. I don't care if your father's saying it. I don't care if the person you respect the most is saying it. Ignore him and get a Kazaka. Do not get an Offen. For your offhand, I'd recommend using your Nuva if you don't have enough AP to kill people. Uh, but once you hit that 269 with the Kutum, that is a good time to switch off from Nuva to Kutum, especially if you have the pen boss armors. But like I said, you want to be able to kill people. 
So I wouldn't recommend switching to Kutum from Nuva until you hit that 269 bracket. At that point on console, you should be able to kill anybody that isn't a full DP meme or a semi full DP meme where they have full evasion boss gear and they do stuff with like a Sissel's necklace, Kadri ring, Centaur belt. Those people, yeah, you're not going to be able to kill them. But guess what? They're also not going to be able to kill you, especially if you've got the pen armors. They won't even get close to scratching you. So now let's look at the crystal department. I'm not going to give a final recommendation to the best set of crystals for the Hashashin until I play with his awakening. Right now, he is a bit stamina hungry. So as a knee jerk reaction, it would be safe to say you want the stamina Jin history is in your shoes. But I'm not going to say change your setup if you've got something similar to what I have now until after the Awakening comes out because maybe these stamina issues do get relieved at that stage. But let's go through the musts. You must have precision crystals in your main hand. Now for your offhand, there are a few different choices you can go with. I just like going damage for the PvE and kind of the PvP as well, but you will get a lot of return for value, especially if you have pen armors like myself, if you go more of the HP routes in the crystals over here. So stuff like the Voltara Spirit Crystal does give you some AP and it gives you 150 HP with some Camasilver AP. Awakened Spirit Crystal is exactly the same as Voltara minus the Camasilver AP. I think Red Spirit Crystal is a nice middle point as well because you also get some extra human damage on top of the AP, but you'd lose a little bit of the HP. You get 100 instead of 150. These three crystals, these are pretty good substitutes as well if you want to go that route. Crit Crystals, these ones up here, these just offer you the most damage then they're going to give you the most return for value when it comes to your grinding. Now for your helmets, I'm running the Jin half year crystals for the evasion and HP. Now, a lot of people would recommend for you to put your hooms in your helmet and hooms in your boots. That is the standard recommendation you will see when you go to YouTube. Just remember these recommendations are coming from the PC. Now I can tell you on Xbox, we don't have the kind of AP that PC has. And the, recommend, the reason why they recommend this is they want you to put the special attack evasion crystals in your chest piece. Now, special attack evasion gives you huge return on investment against people with high AP, but the majority of the people aren't there yet. So for now, I'm finding this setup much more beneficial by putting Jin half years in my helmet with whom's my boots and whom's in my chest piece. In the future, when I get a Garmoth's heart, I would 100% then put the special attack evasion crystals here and switch the Han Hooms and put them in my helmet. The reason being, the spe each special attack crystal in chest piece gives you 10% special attack evasion. But the Garmoth's Heart also gives you 10% special attack evasion. So once you have all three and it's cranked up to 30, at that point, I'm almost certain that on console, even though we have lower APs, that it's going to be superior to have that set up over this current one. But from the testing I've done with the evasion classes, Ninja being the class I tested on primarily, half your crystals just give you more benefit against most players on console. Now, finally, for your glove piece, you 100% want Gin Vipers, nothing else but Gin Vipers in your gloves. Don't care what class you are. And then your four Han Hooms, like I said, this is how I've set them up. But what you can do is put the ones in your armors into your helmet to trade out for special attack. If you don't agree with me, go ahead and do it that way. But I wouldn't recommend changing your build too much until the Awakening comes out. If the Awakening comes out and we do have some issues with stamina, I might consider putting one. I don't think I'll put two uh, Jin histories in my boots. Whichever one, maybe it's the one one that gives you the most stamina but we, I'll have to wait to see what happens. But for now, I'm just gonna recommend this. This might change in the future. Now, before we go into our cancels and combos, let's talk about the movement. You have a couple of, well, you have an iframe in your dash that's part of your protected movement. You have a super armor that's part of the assault and you have a super armor, sorry, not that one. That is tail cutter. So tail cutter, how the assault and dash are your three protected movement skills. There's a few different ways you can combo them together, 
So what you can do is dash, Paladin Assault, Hellcaster, dash. That's one way you can combo them together. Another one is just switch the two middle parts. So you dash, then tail cutter into how do you start into dash. But you can also do a dash right in the middle. So the way, there's obviously two different ways you can do that as well. So you could dash, how do you start, just linger it a little bit, dash, tail cutter, dash. And finally, you can do the tail cutter first instead of the how do you start. So that would be dash, tail cutter, dash, how do you start, dash. Honestly, for me, it doesn't matter which way you do it. You could do it whichever way you like or whatever your cooldowns permit, but that is your protected movement. Now, there is two extra movement skills that we have that is not protected. One is Piercing Tornado, the other is Sand Slicer. Sand Slicer is super fast movement, similar to Murderous, but it doesn't quite have the range of Murderous. It's a bit less in terms of range and it doesn't have the auto lock on. So if you're a ninja, you know you can kind of murder us and it's kind of got a relatively good width where you can hit your opponent this doesn't the sand slicer is more like the um dragon bite from musa maywas where it's got it's got a little bit of width but not a lot like you have to be pretty precise with how you position the sand slicer if you're trying to use cc people but it's definitely a good way to move around so if you want to have like an extended movement combo where you are you're pretty sure your opponent's not going to CC you, but you just kind of want to make range. Or it doesn't even matter. Like, you need to get really far away quickly. So what I'd recommend if you want to get really far away quickly and you're certain you're not going to be CC'd is dash, slicer, tornado, dash, paladin assault, dash, tail cutter. So that's one way. Um, if you think you're going to get CC'd, but you have enough health to tank the damage, you can start with your protected movement first and then end with your fast movement. So that would be dash, tail cutter, dash, paladin assault, dash, sand slicer into, sorry, I messed it up there, piercing tornado. You'd go straight from sand slicer into piercing tornado, but because I'm talking, I kind of messed it up a little bit. But those are the different ways you can use your movement. And honestly, you can combo your movement any way you want any order you want to combo it feel free to combo it that way just remember that if you're throwing in the sand slices and piercing tornadoes they're unsafe but there is one extra thing that you need to remember you can use sand slicer after any of your movement skills except how the assault so if you do how the assault and hold right bumper you're just going to end up doing an auto attack afterwards so just keep that one in mind but after let's say um, a dash you can use sand slicer after tail cutter you can use sand slicer but you just can't use sand slicer after halidi assaults but you can use halidi assault after sand slicer so just keep that in mind and now let's get into the cancels so now let's talk about cancels mastering all of your cancels is very very important to mastering your class a lot of cancels that i'm going to show you are going to look pretty insignificant and you're going to be like why the hell would i ever want to do that but it's important that you ingrain these in your muscle memory over the long term because you might find there are some weird situations that that specific way of cancelling even though it looks insignificant is actually really beneficial and you'll find some weird ways of bringing skills together usually by accident by letting your hands do the work because you have the muscle memory in the first place this won't happen unless you have that muscle memory so i'm going to go through every single cancel i can think of hopefully i nail all of them but there is a chance i might miss one or two so if i do please just leave in the comment section down below or maybe i don't know all of them if there's any i don't know about again just leave it in the comments down below we're going to start with Paradise Beckons. There are three skills you can activate Paradise Beckons with. Now, the first skill, you're going to need to activate Owl's Dominion first. After Owl's Dominion, you can activate Paradise Beckons. So once you've got that done, if you hold right trigger, you'll activate this skill. Very good. It has a down smash and it's a knockdown. Knockdown is one of the best types of CCs because people can't V from them if you fight them in the open world. So that's one down. Another way of activating Paradise Beckons is after Arid Assault, which is your block jump. So if you block jump to someone and you hold right trigger, you can activate Paradise Beckons. This probably isn't the best thing to do because it will take you to CC limit straight away. But if you're 
going behind a standing target that does not present a threat to you for example a wizard that's activating toilet bowl you've accidentally gone behind him because you've used your teleport at the wrong time you can then just hold right trigger to give extra damage to him and then probably cancel that into a rage reaver for example just to add damage but like i said knowing these cancels is important because you might find some weird ways that they'll come in useful in the future now the final skill you can cancel it with is hourglass of defiance so once you activate it on the activation you can activate paradise beckons and anytime you teleport to it as well you can also activate paradise beckons so those are the three ways you can activate this skill and these three ways are in the description of the skill itself i don't think there's any other ways you can activate it if i'm wrong please let me know down below so now let's talk about owl's dominion so owl's dominion one of the main ways you're going to cancel into owl's dominion is through ridge reaver that's usually the most effective and common way i see most people use this skill but there are definitely a lot of skills you can cancel into Owl's Dominion. One is your straight up block. You can take that straight into Owl's Dominion as well. Another is Sand Divider. So you can use Sand Divider to cancel into Owl's Dominion. Another is Shadow Splitter. You can cancel that into Owl's Dominion. Another is Halady Throw. You can cancel that into Owl's Dominion. Another is Purge. You can cancel this into Owl's Dominion. You can cancel Rupture into Owl's Dominion. You can also cancel a successful Mirage into Owl's Dominion. Also, if you mess up your Mirage, you can also cancel that into Owl's Dominion. And that's all the ways I know how to cancel into that skill. Obviously, you can't activate it because you have to hold A. That's the bottom combination. It can only be activated after certain skills. And those are the skills that I know of that you can do that. So now let's talk about the different ways that we can cancel Ridge Reaver. As you can see, it's a very, very slow animation, but there are plenty of ways we can speed this up. The easiest and most common one is to dash in any direction, and that will cancel your Ridge Reaver animation, making it nice and quick. But other useful ones, let's say you just want to be SA trading, you can do the absolute descent and right after do Ridge Reaver. So that's a good SA trade right there if you have the gear to do so. Now also at the very end of quicksand, so if you were to let this skill go all the way to the end, you can also use that to cancel Ridge Reaver. At the end of Piercing Tornado, you can also cancel the Ridge Reaver animation. At the end of Halidi Assault, that can also be used to cancel the animation. After Sand Slicer, you can cancel the animation. After Purge. That can be used as well. You can use it after Rupture also. You can use it after Sand Divider. You can use it after teleporting to your Sandstorm. You just have to wait a fraction of a second. If you try to use it on the teleport itself, you're going to end up using Paradise Beckons instead of the Ridge Reaver Cancel. What I would recommend is also, after you wait that fraction of a second, start by holding left trigger first, then holding right trigger, so you don't get any input confusions. So you definitely activate the Red Reaver over the Paradise Beckons. After a successful Mirage, you can also activate Paradise Beckons. Another important one, if you mess up Mirage and you don't hit your target, you can then cancel to Ridge Reaver as well. And finally, from your block, you can also cancel into Ridge Reaver. Now, some extra cancel kind of tip things is all your super armors. If you dash after them, there have been times I just get caught. I don't know if it's the transition from a super armor into a dash that's the issue. Or if it's just the beginning of the dash itself is unsafe and then obviously when you're doing super army you're standing still so it gives the end of your opponent the time to target you to cc you in that transition i'm not really sure it could be a frame drop thing it could be a lag thing but it happens a lot so one way to counter that is when you're doing your super armors hold right trigger and you'll cancel into tail cutter make sure obviously tail cutters off cooldown so it's super armor when you do it so that's one of your super armors, Owl's Breath. Another one is uh, Descent. If you hold right trigger, you'll cancel that one. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with your Quicksand, but with your Ridge Reaver, it does work. So you can use that to cancel out of it as well. 
this will help keep you a bit more protected in those scenarios you don't always have to cancel with this skill um call it by ear obviously if you're in the danger zone if you're in someone's hot spot where they can cc you maybe think about using that skill at that time but if it's on cooldown you are forced to really use your sand warp to cancel those skills all of those skills i mentioned including quicksand can be cancelled with the sand warp but like i said i don't know if it's intended i don't know if it's a bug i don't know if it's the transition or if it's literally just this skill itself has a little hole at the beginning i'm not sure but i do get caught a lot with that so one way you can counteract it is by using tail cutter but one other way you can cancel uh, descent is with sand slicer but this obviously isn't protected so you will be getting cc'd if you do that However, you can do some interesting mechanics with this that I noticed. So, let's say you activate Descent, you can go Sand Slicer, charge your purge, dash and activate your purge. This could be a good way to catch people that aren't suspecting it, but you, you can't just keep doing it over and over again because eventually they're going to figure out, hey, this guy's doing this move, I'm going to get ready to see some. But, it is a cool way of catching someone for sure. You don't have to go straight if you're... If you move your camera angles, you can go in different directions. And it's really the only way you can change a camera angle as well. As you can see, I can now go backwards, right? Whereas if you were to use the tail cutter, you kind of, you can't really go backwards. You're forced to go in the direction you're facing. So if I was to turn around and hold tail cutter, you can see like it does this slow loop around. So it's not as effective of switching your direction. But obviously the dash, you can do in any direction from there, but do keep in mind, I do get caught quite a lot when I do that. But the reason I find the sand slicer interesting is because you can use the uh, purge dash with it. So that's the next cancel we're gonna talk about is uh, purge. So what you can do to cover some distance is how to the assault, charge, purge, dash, let go of purge. So that's a cool way of CCing someone as well. I've got a few clips that I'll probably put in my next one that I've done that. It is unsafe, but it's a nice mechanic. You can catch people off guard and you can mix things up with it as well. And it also creates a way of you be able to have a large distance between you and your opponent and then unsuspectingly closing it down real quickly and getting that long range CC. Now, another one is Rupture. Rupture, in my opinion, is kind of an issue with this class. There's a lot of times you want to do Rupture and you'll end up doing Tail Cutter. There's a lot of times you want to do Tail Cutter, you end up doing Rupture. The rule of thumb is after any skill, pretty much any skill, if you hold right trigger, you're going to do tail cutter if you do it quickly. But if you wait a certain amount of time, you end up doing rupture instead. So I'll give you an example with a dash. If you just dash and you're holding right trigger, you do tail cutter. But if you were to dash and then wait a second, and then press right trigger, you do rupture. That's the intended use but frame drops really mess with this and console has a lot of frame drops so it, it's kind of annoying using rupture as it's intended honestly if there's any devs watching this my advice would be please let us put it on our ring menu because we cannot do that at the minute rupture is not available to put here so we can at least lock it to reduce the problems we have with the uh, different cancels and that way use it that way another one is maybe just put it on back x i mean right now there's currently nothing on x i'm holding x with all directions nothing's happening but obviously your air assault is so when you have your ap buff use x arid, arid assault sorry not air assault um not gonna happen but i'll just throw my suggestion out anyway if you were to make arid assault forward x and you were to make rupture back x you're gonna really just make our lives a lot a lot easier like this is going to be a lot more fluid and a lot more usable and you won't have the uh, button issue where you do like right now we have a button issue with rupture and um, tail cutter you won't have that issue with arid assault if you put arid assault on forward x and rupture on back x and honestly let's let's be frank most people are holding forward on their left stick when they activate arid assault anyway it's kind of a natural thing that you do. But anyway, let's get back to the rupture itself. So a way, one way you can cancel into rupture very consistently all the time is with Shadow Splitter, right? If you just press back and right bumper, you do two slices. This is literally the only skill that will cancel your Shadow Splitter to make it only do one slice, and that is rupture. 
and you don't need to let go let go of the back on your left stick so you can keep holding back on your left stick you tap right bumper and then you just press right trigger you pr almost instantly um, cancel into rupture that's the easiest way i found of doing it and the most consistent way so when i want to do rupture this is how i always do it if you see me do rupture and i don't do this first the first slash of that first that means i actually wanted to do um, tail cutter but there was an input problem and it ended up doing rupture which gets you killed a lot i know people that lock one or the other i know people that lock rupture so they can always tail cutter i know someone that also locks tail cutter so they can always rupture i'd recommend not locking any of them because rupture is a super powerful move it does insane amounts of damage it's really good against witch wizards when they're super armor rotating you can just stay out of the way and just hit them with a the rupture and do crazy damage whilst they're sitting there doing their rotations it's good against strikers that like to linger any class that's lingering their super armors you can just punish them with chunking damage using your rupture now the next skill here is a controversial skill is our glass of death as you can see it's got a slow wind up and when you hit the ground it takes a second to cc your opponent now you are forward guard during the wind up you are iframe when you disappear but when you appear in front of your opponent before you cc him you are vulnerable and even when you cc him you are still vulnerable so there is a few things we can do now one of the most common things that most people do including myself is when on the landing you just keep holding left trigger and a directional input so you cancel the landing into your iframe that's a good way of disorientating your opponent and it's definitely a viable thing to do but there's actually a few ways we can cancel the wind up as well one of them is with piercing tornado so if you piercing tornado you can cancel the wind up which is nice it speeds things up for you another one is purge i don't know how useful this is going to be but like i said sometimes you'll find some weird quirky things that you can do so keep that one in mind my personal favorite way of canceling it is with Ridge Reaver to cancel the animation because it is a super armor into the cancel. And also during the animation, it gives you time to aim it if your opponent's moving around a lot. Another good way of canceling into it that I like is uh, Halady Assault because it's, again, it's a slow move. So it gives you plenty of time to aim it when your opponent's moving around a lot. So another one is Sand Divisor. You know, if you want to give yourself an accuracy buff before going in, that speeds up the first part of the animation. So those are skills you can cancel from to increase the speed of the beginning animation. There's also a couple of things you can do to cancel the skill completely. One is piercing tornado. So that way you just cancel it straight away and do a movement skill. This is important because hourglass of defense gives you an AP buff and you need those AP buffs to use the arid assault. So this is one of the ways you can get an AP buff without actually hitting anyone. Another simple one is just your dash. So as you're winding up, you can dash to cancel it. And there's also another way of canceling landing when you get there as well. You could do that. So that kind of just speeds it up a little bit. It's probably better to cancel into that to try and get the CC a bit faster rather than relying on the CC from this skill itself, in my opinion. I don't think there's any other way of canceling the ending besides that and the dash. If there is, just drop it down below. I don't believe there is so. There is though. So there's actually another interesting thing you can do with Mirage. Hopefully Fatality here activates the skill for me. Here we go. So here's an interesting do, right? If you're, let's say, targeting that person over there and you forward guard the Sandstorm, you can Mirage to this person over here. Mirage is your only protected CC. So, this not only works with this um, this sandstorm, it works with like Wizard Witch when they put the AoEs on the ground. It works with that, any kind of damage. If an archer, let's pretend Fatality is an archer and Fatality hits me, but I'm looking at someone else, I can teleport to the other person. So that's, um, that's a cool little tip slash trick that you guys can use for your Hashashin. So that's pretty much it for the cancels. We're gonna go into the combos now. Hopefully I haven't missed any cancels. Like I said, if I have, just leave it in the comments down below. 
Um, Zekt hit the nail on the head for one of the highest damaging combos that you can do. And that's off your uh, block jump. It's one of your most reliable catches at the minute as well until people figure out it's actually not that strong and very easily countered. But don't tell them. Let them figure that out for themselves. So the way it's going to work is we're going to use our Haldi's throw to block jump to our opponent. We're going to hold right bumper into Sand Slicer, then hold back so the Sand Slicer cancels into Shadow Splitter. Then we're going to hold A to do Owl's Dominion, hold right trigger to do Paradise Beckons, then do LTRT to cancel that into Ridge Reaver, and we're going to finish with Descent. So that should look like this. Now, the only other things I'd like to add on to it, now if your opponent is not going to die from the descent and your opponent has a grab, if you didn't get a knockdown, a down smash on the um, on the ridge reaver, I would not recommend ending with descent. I'd recommend ending with piercing tornado because you can easily cancel out that as well to stop your opponent from grabbing you. And another way you could end it is after the um, Ridge Reaver is dash backwards and use the Shadow Splitter cancel to do your Rupture. Um, you can not use the Shadow Splitter if you're happy with your timing, but if you don't do it right, what would happen is you might do Tail Cutter instead of Rupture. So do keep that in mind. But Rupture does a lot of damage. However, I wouldn't do that against Block Jump opponents. So the Mirror Match, a Kuno or a Ninja because you're kind of stuck on the animation a little bit and they're either going to block jump you when they get up so that's going to easily cc you and really don't use it against the shashins because when they get up they're just going to mirage and instantly cc you so the most safe thing to do is the piercing tornado it's not the maximum amount of damage to finish it off but it's going to put you in a position to be able to quickly iframe away to not be able to get grabbed or block jump. But if you have a lot of AP, the, the lazy combo, so however you catch your opponent, the lazy combo is go to Ridge Reaver, Dominions, Beckons, and Defense. This is a very easy combo. I use it all the time. Super simple, relatively quick. It's not really safe for RBF, but if you do it at the right time, you can get away with it. Um, things that I would recommend for RBF, let's say you CC someone and there's other people around you. Um, I'd recommend repositioning, right? So let's say you CC'd him, someone around you, reposition, hold your block, and then do Owl's Dominion. That way, there is a good chance that the opponent that's come to CC you is going to either hit your forward guard or go through your iframe. I haven't spent that much time in small scale slash RBF. I don't know if it's going to be super effective, but just in my mind, logically, it works. And other quick things as well, if someone gets CC'd in an RBF scenario, or by even if you're like out you know, p open world pvp if your opponent gets cc'd and they're pretty far away don't forget a quick way you can catch up to them is with your block jump which will extend the cc on the down when you hit the ground as well other quick ways you can get to them you want to get to them quickly and using halloween assault and tail cutter is too slow so other ways you can close the gap quickly is by dashing is by dashing Sand Slicer into Piercing Tornado. Sand Slicer isn't going to CC them because it's a stun, but it might down smash. Piercing Tornado will refloat them. So keep that in mind. Piercing Tornado is a really good re-CC. If you're not, if you've messed something up, you haven't realized you've CC'd them and you don't have time to do a filler skill, you can always use Piercing Tornado for the re-CC or Sand Divider. Sand Divide is probably a little bit better because it gives you that accuracy buff, but that is your old shit. I didn't realize I got the CC and you want to extend. And then after you do any of those moves, remember these cancel into Ridge Reaver, so you can easily cancel to Owl's Dominion and Beckons. That's just your basic, easy go-to combo. There are plenty of other ways you can combo using um, Rupture as your ending damage kill, but... Do not use Rupture as your re-CC because the knockback counts as a CC. So if you've CC'd someone, they're on the ground, they've been floated or wherever the situation may be, if it's not a stiff and you use Rupture, you're just going to end up pushing them back but not getting the float for the CC. 
but keep that in mind guys thank you very much for watching i know this was a longer guide i'm probably going to do something similar to this with the awakening and try to also have a condensed version a little bit later on as well to help people that want to just pop in for 10 15 minutes and get a few of the basics i didn't do a condensed version for this one because like i said zek has got a great foundation video so if you haven't watched it already definitely watch it He's, he knocks it out in 15 minutes and just gets the basics down really well so definitely would recommend going there and if you liked or disliked the video show that with the thumbs up or down button below either way it's going to help me out and if you do see yourself coming back to my channel quite often i would really appreciate that subscription but either way i look forward to catching you guys in the next video